And I believe that, um, that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. That's what I'm looking for. Amen? The exceedingly abundantly above all that we could imagine or think. My wildest expectation of God, he is going to quadruple beyond anything that I could ever think. Amen? God's going to do more than we could ever, ever, ever imagine. He's going to do it by his spirit. And what I believe that is we realize that, that God wants to do it through us and we've got to break free from the inhibitions and the things that get around us. And we've been talking a lot about breaking the strongholds and breaking the, the walls that have been built around our lives that have got to be broken so we can be free to worship the King. Amen. I want to just, uh, today it's a little bit different what I want to share, but I want to really just shared this morning that God is watching over us. If, I can, if we can capture what I'm thinking here, God is watching over us. We're not alone. We're not sort of pleading with God to do things. God is watching over us. And if I can make this statement, there's nothing wrong with God. If we're missing out, it's got nothing to do with God's side of the bargain. Can we catch this, what I'm saying? If there's something wrong, it's not God's problem. God will stick to his side of the covenant. If there's something missing, it means that we have drifted away from the great provision or the understanding, or something's come in to rob, to kill, to destroy the purpose, the plan that God has for our life. God watches over the sparrows. How much more valuable are we than a sparrow? So if God watches over sparrows, He's watching over us. And today He's watching over us, and what I believe God was speaking to me about is this, is that He wants to pour out His abundance upon our lives. He wants, to, he wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to bless us. He wants to do everything that He said He would do in His Word, but many times He can't. Not because He doesn't want to, but because we're not in the position we're not under the spout where the glory comes out. Is that okay to say that? And I believe that what God is saying to us now is to reposition ourselves. To get ready for a mighty move of the Spirit of God. To get rid of the, rid of the things that says, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'll never ever make it, I'm past my use by date. Many people have told me I'm past my use by date. I got news for them. <laughs> this vessel don't have a use by date. Amen. Amen. I'm, we're just starting. Amen. We're just getting ready. We're just getting ready. If, if uh, Abraham and those guys could start at 85, there's still room for us, Joe. Amen. And, <laughs> and all the fellas over 80 said, Amen. Because I believe that that. What we're about to do is there's a transition from I can't to I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And there's got to come an expectation and an anticipation on the inside of the church that starts to believe for great things. Not just get by. I was listening to uh, uh, my good brother Joel Osteen this morning as he was preaching and he made a statement that was an amazing statement that the children of Israel, when they came out of bondage, when they came out of bondage, they were still thinking as a slave thinks. And, not, and even when they talked to God, they were just asking God to, to make their slavery a little bit better instead of being delivered. You see, God was there to deliver them not to just make things a little bit better. And you know, when the, the word of God came and said, God says, set my people free, the Pharaoh got angry and made it even tougher. 
And, as, and, and they now had to get the straw and they had to get everything to make the bricks. And so instead of just praying, God, will you help me to get the straw? Will you help me so I can get my quota? See, see that mentality that holds you back into a slave mentality. We're going to say, I don't, I'm not going to build another brick for this mob. I want out of here. Amen. I, I'm not just going to play second fiddle to some poodle puppy devil that's got me in, in a negative state. I'm coming out in Jesus' name. I'm breaking out of this thing. Because God watches over us. And God is going to take his church, I believe, into the dimensions. And this morning as we were prophesying, the Spirit of God was speaking. I believe that God wants to take us beyond anything we've ever seen before. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly. And Sharon almost preached my message this morning. <laughs> Part of it anyhow. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20 is where I'm going to share from this morning. And it's an amazing thing that, uh, you know, you can be there just loving on God, but how many people know that there's an enemy out there that wants to stop you? So when the enemy comes, how are you going to react? What are you going to, what's your response going to be? Are you going to allow the enemy to walk all over you or are you going to allow God to raise up a standard within you that will overcome the enemy? And let me say it again, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And God is going to build a spirit church, a spirit people, amen? A people not led by the flesh, but people who are led by the spirit, because these are the people that are the sons and daughters of God. And there is a church within the church. We know the church universal, we know the church on the Sunshine Coast, but within every church, every place, there is people in that congregation that want to break out of and into what God has for them. And so within the church, there is the church, the sons and the daughters of God that I believe that are going to be revealed in these days that we live in. And it says here, it happened after that, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Amorites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then, came, then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude, everybody say great multitude. A great multitude, if I can find my place now, I've lost it. <laughs> a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria and from in these other places. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Here is this man, most probably in a, in a position of, you know, comfort, uh, just going through life. And all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, hey, there's three nations that are coming against you. There are three nations that are, going, that are here to stop you. And the immediate thing is that in the natural, Jehoshaphat knew he had no way of stopping these people from doing what they intended to do. In the natural, friend, we've got no way whatsoever that we can stop what the enemy wants to do with us in the natural. But I thank God today that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And God says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will raise up a standard against him. And friend, we've got to turn our eyes from the problem up into the heavenlies and believe God that he will anoint us because I want to tell you one dip, one touch, one drop of the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to annihilate every devil. One little bit of anointing will break every yoke and break every fetter and destroy the enemy's plan for your life. It all depends where you look. If you keep looking and listening to what the enemy wants you to hear, friend, I want to tell you, you'll go down. But I want to tell you, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, the first thing that happened to Jehoshaphat is fear came into his life. 
But then he set himself to prayer and to fasting and believing God. And we know this story only too well. It's an amazing story. And as, as it goes on, Jehoshaphat stood and, uh, and, 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 and he proclaimed a, a, a court. Then he said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? Friend, I want to tell you, you, and I'm sharing it last week, we've got to come to a place where we encourage ourselves in God. Well, we've got to see God as who he is. God is God, then there's no greater power on this earth. There's no greater force on this earth. There's no greater thing that there's no enemy that could ever, ever, ever come against what God says. And he's, here he is, he's encouraging himself in the Lord. And friend, I want to tell you, we've got to start to encourage ourselves. We've got to say, if God be for me, who can be against me? You've got to fan the flame of your life. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Holy Ghost fire, you'll be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Friend, if nothing else, just get photographs of those things and repeat that. That'll do. Tell you what, the devil's got no answer for the word of God. He's got no answer for the power of Jesus. He says, in your hand, is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell and it goes on and on. And, then, and it starts to go on and it starts to speak about the children that are now that, are, that we, we didn't uh, wipe out. We didn't afflict them, but now they're coming to wipe us out. They're coming to push us out. Friend, I want to tell you, the devil is never going to push the church of the living God out. Friend, we, we are living in a very, very strange time. We've got a, a Mardi Gras that apparently went on in, in, in Sydney. We've got our prime minister that's sitting there. We've got an other idiot that's in one of the floats. If it floats your boat, okay, but I want to tell you. Don't trust the government, friend. The government will let you down. They, they don't even know if old Tony now had an affair. Glory to God. These are the leaders of our country. Friend, I want to tell you, God has not got his faith in the government. He's got his faith in the church. Hallelujah. Yes. In the church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ. Are you not our God? Hallelujah. Are you not the one who saved us and poured out his spirit upon us? Are you not the one who his son to die on a rugged cross. Oh my God, look at the threatenings of the enemy. Raise us up in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands. Raise us up, my God. Let your voice be heard. We got the Pentecostal churches today saying, don't talk in tongues. Dear Jesus, help us. I am not ashamed of speaking in other tongues. It is the power of God. Hallelujah. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. And he breathed on them and they received the mighty Holy Spirit. The power of God. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. You've got to hear. And all this is going on. And, and, and then all of a sudden, the prophets arose. Friend, I want to tell you, it's time to hear the word of the Lord. Because I want to tell you, old hairy legs will try to get you listening to everything that's going on in the world and everything else. Television. Tell a vision. Television has got a purpose and a plan. It's to tell you a, 
of a vision of how you can commit adultery and how our children should fornicate, how to do drugs, how to do this and how to do that. They have got a vision to take the church and the people of God who Jesus died for down a slippery slope. Today, I'm going to tell you everything you watch, whether it's a, it's a nice show that's, or whatever you call it, those shows in here, they're all drinking grog. It's everything you, they want to take you on. There's a winery thing. I ought to tell you, friends, there's more grog being drunk in the church today than in the world. I can remember when I first got saved and went over to New Zealand. Now, we, we had a television when we were, but this guy, this preacher guy, hid his television behind the lounge in case the pastor came home, came to his house. And when he wanted to watch it, he'd pull it out from, and put it up and watch it, and then he'd put it back behind. The, I thought, how stupid can you be and still breathe? <laughs> but friend, the church has gone to the world. It's time that the world is supposed to come to the church. Is that not what it's for? That the world people will come to the church and get saved, but the church is going to the world and going to the dogs. See, God is watching over us. Friend, at the prayer meeting the other day, the other night, we were holding hands. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. It's a prophetic thing. I am a child of God. Are you a child of God? Well, let's live like God would want us to live. Let's not go down the slippery slope. Let's not go down that sliding thing that takes you into, into, into a nothing. The church has got to rise up. And I want to tell you, if we want the power of God, we've got to listen to the ordinances. We've got to do it God's way. Because, friend, there's no other way. There's only one way. Amen. amen. Praise God for that. Amen. But you see, here is Jehoshaphat. And, he, and, and, and there's an enemy out there. And there's this and there's that. Friend, if we can capture God... And what God really wants to do in our midst. You know what? He just doesn't want to put a band-aid on the circumstances or the problems that are in this world today. He wants to totally obliviate it. Totally wipe it off the face of the earth. And here is Jehoshaphat as they, as they begin to set their faces. And the prophet stands up and he says, listen here, you Jehoshaphat. And all you people of Israel, listen to what God's got to say. And oh, friend, if we need to have an ear to hear what God's saying, it's in this hour. Read the bits in red, that'll do. And, he's, and he goes on and he, and he says, hey, the battle's not yours, but it is mine. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. And all Jehoshaphat got excited because he heard the word of the Lord. And they started, all the people stood in one place and they lifted up their voices and they sang with a loud voice. I'm going to tell you, friends, we're going to take the roof off this place. Not just to have loud. I'm not just talking about loud. I'm talking about the anointing. I'm talking about something that'll get inside of us, that'll cause us, our voices to rise with a roar, with a thunder, hallelujah. I want to hear those drums. When that song we're singing today, we're about the rolling thunder. The rolling. We'll sing it later on. <laughs> this is what, you know, the prophet, friend, hear the word of the Lord. God... You know, you, you can sit there and say, oh, God, there's, there's people coming. Where, show me a way of escape. How can I get out of this? How can I sneak out of this like a little worm? And, 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 and will you save me from this, this destruction? God just doesn't want to put that Band-Aid on us. He wants us to rise up and see if we can somehow or other get to, into God, then God will start to move by his spirit. Okay, you're getting this? God will start to do what he wants to do when he finds a bunch of people that he can do it with. We've got to get our mind off just, just getting by into going into the abundance that God has for us. And here is this bunch of people and they're, they're, they're doing their thing, but the Spirit of God comes down and all of a sudden 
there's three nations coming against this Jehoshaphat and, and the children of Israel. Two of the nations join together and start to annihilate the other guy. Then when they finished annihilating that, they were so, had so much blood all over them and they said, well, why stop here? So they killed each other. They wiped out, when Jehoshaphat gets there with the worshippers and with the singers and with all the things that are going on, the shout in the camp, as he looked over, there was not one person still alive. But the interesting part about it was that it took them three days to go and gather the spoil. See, God just doesn't want to get you out and, 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 and whip you over here and put you... No, He wants you to come out with the joy, with the excitement, with the abundance, hallelujah. It took them three days. Can you imagine the wheelbarrows full of gold and silver and mar- everything that was going on? God doesn't want to just have a little church down here that's shutting a Monday. No, He wants us to take over. The church will take over the world. <laughs> you look at that and me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> God wants to take over, amen. amen. He wants to rule and reign. He is a king, and a king must have a kingdom, or he's not a king. <laughs> Don't have to get a so shout just because I'm getting so. Well, I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> get back here. This book is the book. Hallelujah. This book is the one we're going to read. This book. Hallelujah. It's, it, this is a book full of victory in Jesus' name. It's an amazing book. You can open up any page. Somebody said to me, I read the last page. We win. I ought to tell you, we win on every page. Why you just wait till the end? 2 Kings 6, 24. And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered his army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. Indeed, they, were, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shackles of silver and one-fourth of a calf of doves dropping, five, plus five shackles of silver. And the king of Israel was passing by on the wall. A woman cried out saying, Help, oh, help my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, where can I find for you? When I, where can I find help for you? From the threshing floor or from the wine presses? Then the king said to her, what is troubling you? And she answered, the woman said to me, this, uh, this woman said to me, give your son for me to eat and we'll eat him today and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him and I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Now it happened when the king heard these words, uh, with the heads of the woman, that he tore his clothes as he passed by on the wall. Here's a situation, friend, impossible situation. But it's not by might, it's not by power, it is by my spirit, says the Lord. And so here's a rising up now and the king gets angry with the church. He gets angry with God's representative. And he's going to take off Elijah's head. He's He's going to take him out. But the man of God gets wind of it. He hears what's happening by his spirit. And so he begins to rise up. As this guy's coming and he spoke these words, he said, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Let, I cannot say this more than I, I've just got to keep saying it. Friend, we've got to hear what God's saying. We can't just get caught up in the passive Christianity. We can't get caught up in just, you know, get by street because God wants to raise up an army that's going to take over the world. Amen. And here are these people and and a situation. He said, hear the word of the Lord. God's going to do something miraculous. There's people eating their babies. They're they're buying donkey's heads and, and doves dropping. 
They're, they're in a situation where there's hopelessness all over the place. But somehow or other, the man of God knew that the, there was an answer coming. And he already had this answer. And he said, okay, I've waited long enough. I've waited long enough. Now I'm going to speak the word. I want to tell you, if, if he would have waited another few months, that's how long it would have taken. If he would have waited a bit longer, that's, how long it, that's when it would have happened. But he stood up this day. He said, okay, I've waited long enough. Friend, I want to tell you, it's time for you and I to rise up and say, I've waited long enough. I've waited long enough to get rid of this thing, to get rid of that. You know, when certain situations arise, when people don't get well, when people get sick, or this happens in your business, or that happens in your marriage, and people get all frustrated, I want to tell you, friends, it's time just not to sit back and say, well, that's life. No, say, I've waited long enough. I've waited long enough. I'm going to start speaking something out now and hear the word of the Lord. And he prophesied and he spoke the word of God. Tomorrow at this time, barley and, and whatever it was will be sold to the gate for a shackle and blah, blah, blah. And we know that there was a guy there that rose up and he said, oh, it'll never happen even if God opened up the windows of heaven. But then when we, the church, start to rise up and start to speak the word of God, and start to speak to sickness and disease and, and pestilence and the things that are attacking the church. As we start to speak to that thing that brings, like, that brings a famine. There's a famine in the church, friends, of the anointing. We need more of the anointing. There's a famine that's got to be broken. And he started to speak. And friend, when we start to rise up, and, and, you know, it may be different here, I don't know. But as we as a people, as we begin to rise up and put off our inhibitions and put off the things that are, that are attacking us and, and, the, and the false humility and the, and, and the inferiorities and the, and the lack that might be in our lives, you can, you can write, write your own list. I've got mine. But one by one, these things have got to come down because they've got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. It's what the enemy is trying to besiege me with. But when the prophet stands up and the people of God and we begin to worship and we begin to praise and we begin to dance in the very presence of God, God, I believe, is going to come down and is going to fall on people all over the place. He came down and he fell on the most unlikely people. Friend, it may be while we're worshiping God down here, while we're preaching, while we're doing something, that the Holy Ghost could fall on the church and the little children could run down the, the aisles here touching people and people would get healed and delivered and set free. They could come and stand out here and prophesy and start speaking the word of God. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm not going to try to preempt it, but I just know that when we begin to do what God says he will do, he will do what he says he would do and he'll pour out his spirit and it will come down. And here we find these, these, these people and they're there and they're talking and, and these guys are saying, why sit we here till we die? But the Holy Ghost came on these four leprous men and they begin to walk, walk towards the Syrian camp. But the Bible says that the Lord, everybody say the Lord. Oh, glory to God. I'll tell you what, friend, we, we may not be a lot of people in this church, but I want to tell you, there could come a roar out of this place that would set that, that the that every devil in hell would sound like as if there was a million of us. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Anything is possible to them that believe. Could fall on the children's church this morning. Little Paris could fly out of here. Is, she might say something we don't want to hear. <laughs> Four leprous people, the power of God falls on them. They go heading towards a Syrian camp. And the Lord calls the Syrians to hear the sound of an exceeding great army. What were they? Four leprous men. I've seen leprous people. They're, half their limbs are missing. Actually, feet were missing. Hands were missing. Face parts missing. We've seen them, haven't we, Bill, over there in India? The 
Well, they would have looked a motley bunch, but God caused the Syrian army to hear the sound of an abundant army and fear filled their hearts and they ran for their lives. Again, it wasn't just a matter of getting out of the, being besieged. The tents were full of gold, hot chooks. <laughs> I often dream, I often dream of seeing those guys run into that tent and there would have might have been a lamb being roasted, hot chooks barbecued, tearing those things apart. <laughs> hey? Hey? Hey, how hungry are you for the word of God? Do you want to get in bottom? Hey? Get into it. <laughs> oh, I've got a I need a word today, Lord. <laughs> Shut up, <Andy. laughs> I need more than the word, hallelujah. I need the Holy Ghost. These guys, they just got full of the Holy Ghost. They got in there, they pulled that lamb apart, they ate that chook, they got in there. Then they looked over and they saw gold. When their belly was full, they saw gold. They grabbed gold and they grabbed the clothes and they put it over there and they buried it. And they said, hey, we better go and tell somebody. Church, whatever's going on, don't keep silent about it. Because these four leprous men said, if we keep silent, mischief will come around us. You know what will happen to us? Presence of God. How many people felt the presence of God? Come on. Come on, give me a wave. Not, it's not a trick question. You know what happens? We get used to it. We, you know the greatest danger is we get used to it. But I tell you what. Get a go out and tell everybody. Go into the highways and byways and bring people in that start getting saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and healed and delivered and set free. That will keep the thing going. Amen. Because it's not meant for us to keep for ourselves. If you do, mischief will come around your life and will become, oh, I didn't like that song today. Oh, I thought the drummer was a bit loud. <laughs> Amen. How many people want the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Loud, soft. I, I love soft mattresses. <laughs> but I love, I love the hot. How many people love the hot? Somebody in this place, you've got a condition in your left ear. Who's that person? Quickly. Don't be shy. Quick. Come on. Come on. Rishaka bundi nika la bundu de de bundi. Rishaka bunda nana bahi di kili andu de de busuturi bi baha de budu vachia teka dai rabunde. Rishaka bunde. Loosen it now! In Jesus' name. Release her now! Release him! In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, come on up there, Musa. What do you got? <laughs> Right here. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody here too, you get uh, pains in your legs. Who's that quickly? Quickly. Come on. Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to get that eye thing too. I've been shifting. I've got that many words of knowledge in me. <laughs> no, no. Pam, lift your hands. The fire of God. Come out here, girl. This girl needs a miracle, amen? <laughs> Come on. Lift up your heart. Lift up your hands. That I will be healed and those things will be healed. I'm sorry about the noise I'm making with these shoes. I'll wear rubber ones next time. Loosen it to her now. <laughs> 